we watched that movie at your place last week. Mm -hmm. So, so Jay had never seen this, but uh, I, I got him to finally watch The Cell, uh, which is like a movie that came out in like, I think 2000, a long with time Jennifer ago. With Jennifer Lopez. With Jennifer Lopez and, and Vince Vaughn. And he resisted for a long time because he's like, isn't that movie terrible? And I'm like, you know what? It looked terrible too. <laughs> you know, a lot of people thought it was. When they, it, when, no, seriously, when they yeah. first when it first came out, and that's why it wasn't ter like it wasn't terribly popular when it first came out. But I remember it, and um, it really left a deep impression upon me. Uh, first of all, obviously for the the beautiful visuals that it has, you have to you have to it admit, yeah, it has yeah, beautiful absolutely. like beautifully rendered graphics and imagery, and and cinematography and photography in it. It's it's actually quite lovely. Um, it's rather dark and material. I don't want to really spoil it for anyone, but... Spoiler alert. <laughs> spoil it's from 2000. And, uh, I know, but, but, but... Because, because I want you to spoil it for me, because I, I don't feel I really got it. <laughs> I feel I'm missing something. Okay, so should I give a, a small summary then? Yes, please. Okay, so just, just Jennifer Lopez is basically this uh, therapist, psychiatrist, who works with a new technology that allows her to get into somebody's mind. So she's using this right now, uh, mostly to help to treat children. So like there's a ch in the beginning of the movie, there's a child who's in a coma. And so she's trying to help the child by going into his mind using mm -hmm. this technology, mm -hmm. right? So, you, know, you, you basically get into the suit, you take a, a kind of drug that puts you in like a, a sleepy state. It's almost kind of like a dream state, but you're awake, but you connect with people through this, this medication that they give you and the technology. Uh, that's kind of the setup. The main story is about how the police, um, in this case represented by Vince Vaughn's character, who's like a, uh, I, want, I think he's FBI, they're trying to, they, they early on in the movie they catch a, a serial killer. The serial killer is deeply disturbed, he like traps women, he, he kidnaps them, he puts them in the secluded place, um, he locks them in this glass uh, or, or plexiglass booth that fills up with water. He drowns them and then he like turns them into dolls. Hmm. Um, so he strikes again and they do catch him early on in the movie, but he suffers a seizure. Um, the bad part of that is that he had already kidnapped a woman and hid her away in his, in his kidnapping cell and they don't know where this victim is. Mm. But, they but she's alive. But she's alive. But they can't question him because he's in a coma. So that's how they get Jennifer Lopez's character involved in this because they have her and her company has the technology to go into people's minds. Kind of yeah. like, if you think about it, like a very early version of Inception in a way. Right, totally. And, and basically find evidence or try to find, uh, find out find where... Find the thought of where you left your... Where, where he left his latest victim. Uh, so like it's a sci-fi crime thriller. Yeah. So you got that part. Yeah. So you make it sound better than it is. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. It just wasn't. I don't know. I, I was missing something. It, it is a, a slightly dated movie. Like when you watch it now, it's a slightly like dated feeling yeah. and a little bit slow. But if you really watch it, um, you get a lot of great lessons out of it. And what, I, even though I had watched it several times. I feel like, especially with a, a lot of things that I've been meditating on lately, I got more out of it this time, during this most recent watch. And what I got out of it this time was, so part of the, the, the treatments that she, she gives, or the, the way she was able to handle uh, the killer. So she does meet, she goes into the killer's mind. It's a very dark, crazy place. Um, and at, well, at one point, the killer actually, because it's his mind, he's able to manipulate what goes on in there. Mm. And in a way, he's able to overpower her with all of his darkness, with all, like, he basically infects her. Right, right, right. I think that that part was the confusing part for me as far yeah. as I couldn't tell that that was what was happening. Yeah, yeah. So in, in the movie, when she goes into his mind and she's trying to figure out, like, where the victim is. She, she gets glimpses, she gets glimpses of his past and she also gets overtaken by by an image that looks like a, a supercharged, super evil 
blown up version of him, which is basically, if you con consider it, it's like his ego. Mm. His ego's out of control. And it basically captures her in mm -hmm. his mind. And she actually starts to forget who she is. Mm -hmm. She forgets what she's there for. She turns into this, like, kind of evil version of herself, mm -hmm. right? And then Vince Vaughn's character is supposed to go in and try to get her to remember who she is. If you think about it, like, who, if someone, if you're around a lot of negativity, mm -hmm. <laughs> It basically can make you forget who you are. Yeah. You can actually get it submerged. Sucks you into, into it that sucks world. you into that world. That's what happened to her. Mm -hmm. She forgets who she is. That's, That's a deeply sweet. spiritual lesson. Super. Um, and she has to have someone to remind her about like where she started and what she's there for. Then she has this idea in order to accomplish her mission and also to help the killer in a way like she sees his like terrible childhood all the abuse he went through um at, honestly he's too far gone but there's a like the image of the child that she finds in his mind the innocent child that had suffered she wants to help that part of his brain she wants she actually reverses the feed of the technology so he gets into her mind mm -hmm. so you remember that part of the movie mm -hmm. right and she, because she brings the killer into her mind, into her world, where she controls everything. And it's, it's, you know, her world is beautiful, it's gorgeous, it's all light and it's positive. She's able to reach him better, at least the part of him that was still good. Even though he had turned into this warped being, there was a part in his subconscious, I guess, that was still very good. Mm. And she was able to overpower him because he brought her into her world. You know, think about that. Think about the, the, the spiritual lesson in that. If you're surrounding yourself, if you go, if you try to go into someone's, if you basically stoop to someone's level or go onto their turf and it's mm. not the most positive, it's actually quite toxic, you'll probably be swept up in the toxicity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you bring someone into your world and you've, been, you've done a lot of work and you're very aware and you're very mindful and you're, you, you approach it with loving kindness and compassion, you have probably a stronger, a likelier uh, chance of creating like a better environment for them or, or providing a safe environment where they can see better, let's say. They have, a, they have a, a, a chance of recourse of coming back. And you know, when you apply that to modern, the modern society, I was starting to think like, let's say, for, you, you know about cancel culture, right? I've heard of it. Yeah, it's basically like if someone uh, or a company, usually it's, a, it's either a famous person or a company, a company does something or says something that people find to be reprehensible or politically incorrect or what have you. And people are like, let's cancel this person. Hansel, like hashtag cancel whoever it is. It's basically saying like, you're wrong, you're terrible, we're going to cancel you, no, we're not going to support you anymore. Yeah. I understand the... Uh, thinking behind that because you want to hold someone accountable. I get that. Uh, on the flip side of that, are you really able to help someone see a different point of view if you just, if you don't make an attempt to have a discussion with them first before you just push them away? Like, is, is that really going to be helpful to you? So I, I was drawing that back to the movie where if someone is not seeing you eye to eye or is trying to hurt you or is a negative, you know, before just completely cutting them off, like it's likely you're, you'll have a better effect on them if you're able to bring them into your world. Show them a different way. Mm. Uh, be the example that you wish to see and let them see that mm -hmm. as opposed to just isolating someone or pushing them away or just cutting them down. Like I think about that with certain family members that I've had that are, have been difficult to say the least. Mm. Um, but it's, I have found that it's not helpful to just cut them down. They, people just get naturally defensive, right? They won't want to listen to you. But if at least you state your opinion or you state what your viewpoint is with love, always with love, you know, and you continue to do that, I think that's more effective. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, you can't force anyone, but you just put it out there and be like, I'm here when you're ready. <laughs> it, 
if they are being rude to you or hurtful, obviously you need to put some boundary, you need to put some space to protect yourself and your loved ones. But this, the message is still, but I'm always, I'm, I'm not going to leave you if you come and look for me. Yeah. <laughs> if, when you're ready, I'm always here. I'm not going to just like push you into the tundras and let you figure it out yourself. Um, I think I see that uh, a lot of times with, you know, there's a lot of social political unrest that goes on right now, right? It's a very divisive world outside and uh, understandably people are hurting, people are in pain. Uh, but when, I think we're getting a little too deep in this, but if you were to just be like, you know, you're wrong, <laughs> you're wrong, you know, you're, let's, let's just get with this group of people who agree with me. Right and shun everyone else who disagrees with us. Are you really going to create any change? Are you really going to make things better? It's more like denial. <laughs> You're creating denial for yourself. Yeah. It's, it's one thing to find a community that supports you. Yeah. But the whole point of that is to find strength so you can, in numbers, approach the opposing side and be like, hey, look, let's talk this out. Why, why is there such a divide? Why is there such a gulf? Where can I clarify for you what you don't understand? And it's hard, yeah. work. it's hard work, isn't it? Super hard work. I'm not saying it's easy, but nothing worth fighting for is easy. Yeah. That's why it's a fight. You gotta fight for it. You cannot have peace without war. I love the peace example a, of the yeah. movie. I hadn't seen it before. It was because uh, it fits in with my beliefs as far as like when we have to confront our demons, we go after them, but you can't fight in their world you can't fight in the demon's world it's going to be negative you know you have to bring the you're demon lose. into you yeah <laughs> you have to bring the demon into your world and show him yeah show him that you're peaceful that you don't mean harm to him and that you want to be friends <laughs> <laughs> were you thinking of someone just now uh, just general <laughs> the devil <laughs> being homies of the devil yeah and so I, I found the movie to be deeply spiritual it got me thinking about all these different things mm. Um, and it, it actually was kind of validating because, you know, as like our family, our group does, like, as opposed to just shoving a message down people's throats about, you know, how you can live your life better, I think we just kind of live our life and just invite people to come in and see. And oftentimes people want to, like, be a part of it mm -hmm. just by seeing it. Absolutely. Just by being a part of it. Yep. Uh, like, I see that at the house where, like, the way all all the moms just you know they, they run the school the academy the mm -hmm. home the, basically the homeschool ac um, academy that we have going at my family's house um, again you can do whatever you want public school private school homeschooling whatever it is but it's as long as it works for your child so we find that for a lot of the children in our household this works <laughs> this works for them mm -hmm. and they have a lot of hands-on help and they're getting a lot of um, attention and they get to explore all these different things and you know a lot of kids like do not function well in a regular school environment but it's one of those things that can't be told you just have to experience it yeah but we're more than happy to show people like hey you can this is, this is just another way you can take it for what it is and people are more than happy to actually come and observe so for some people it's not for them for others it's just like this is what I this is perfect mm. for my kid but it comes from like that, that warmth of, of just inviting people like, hey, just this is another way you can yeah. see. All with love. All with love. Always. So that's all. I know. That's a lot of thoughts that I had from one movie. No, that was great. <laughs> you really broke it down very nicely for me. Because, yeah, I wasn't, I mean, I got it. You were kind of saying it along the way of, during the movie and I was kind of getting it. Yeah. Uh, but now you said it much better. And I really appreciate it. <laughs> now you get this was better than the movie. This was way better than the movie. I won't say that. I would definitely still say, I would still recommend you to watch the movie okay. again. Maybe I'll try it again. Maybe try it again. Yeah, by myself. I'll, by I'll yourself. Watch a movie. Yeah, focus on it. Yeah. Read it, like, put on subtitles. Sometimes, like, especially with older movies. I really movies, like subtitles. The audio sometimes gets yeah. messed up. I, I like to watch movies with subtitles. A, because I don't miss anything. Mm -hmm. And B, because I'm, like, I have, even as young as I am, I'm hard of hearing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so... I, I appreciate seeing the subtitles. I like the subtitles too. Yeah.